Let me ask you something. What is the one thing that makes movies different from the other forms of storytelling? It's simple, the visual medium. Instead of books in which you have to read and imagine the look and the feel of the world yourself, in a film, however, someone has already done it for you and that's where the cinematographer comes in. Now this doesn't always mean a good thing because sometimes the world is very magnificent, the other times it's very generic and incomplete. But you see cinematography is a very technical field as there will always be some f-stops and light bulbs to adjust. For example, this may be a technically perfect frame, but cinematography is much more than this. It's an art. A good cinematographer will create visual drama in his frames to go along with the story. Everything, every frame, every angle, every light is chosen to express in great detail a certain idea or emotion. So today we'll look into few of the cinematic decisions Padmavat made to fill its world with depth, drama and dynamic. Hi everyone, I am Akshun and welcome to this video. Unlike Bansali's previous film, an epic historical romance tale of 18th century in which it is difficult to take sides as we understand and care about both of these characters. Padmavat instead creates a fine line between right and wrong from the start. The story in the most uncomplicated way is about good and evil and that is okay if it's articulated perfectly, which it isn't, but that doesn't mean the movie isn't good looking. Thanks to Sudeep Chatterjee for his beautiful visuals, Bansali is able to present his good and evil contrast with utmost sublimity. Right from the beginning, we are made to perceive these two worlds with contrary characters, good and evil, Rajput and Khilji as light and dark. While there is a glint of amber in every frame of Chittor, Khilji's Delhi is painted with black charcoal. In an interview with the director of photography, he said, these two worlds were different like in The Beauty and the Beast. Alauddin is rugged. Even if he is royalty, there is a ruggedness to him, a roughness, while the other world is very graceful and romantic. Another way the movie separates these two worlds is by using hard light beams to create a natural atmosphere. The first time we get a glimpse of these light beams is when Padmavati meets Raghav Chetan, signifying the corrupt nature of this unholy guru. Just as Raghav Chetan becomes successful in plotting Alauddin against Chittor, these unusual light beams become a major decor in Khilji palaces and tents, signifying the scarcity of light, as in the scarcity of good. With Alauddin coming to Chittor, the darkness comes with him. Slowly, the two worlds start merging. We first notice it in the background, slowly creeping up towards us. As later, the world of Chittor gets completely destroyed, covered with darkness, with only a sparse amount of light left. Also, did you notice the symbols of Rajput and Khilji, the sun and the moon respectively are used immensely as a device of visual storytelling. For example, to notify us the intentions of Alauddin Khilji, we get a whole lot of shots when we see Khilji literally blocking the sun. A great visual motive for evil winning over good. That being said, Alauddin Khilji is actually the most interesting character of the movie and not Padmavati. One can point towards the over-the-top performance by Ranveer Singh and yes, he's actually pretty good. But unlike Padmavati and Ratan Singh, his character is well layered. Beyond this obvious evil, we even see the desire. And the movie at some point makes us feel sympathetic towards him. His bisexuality also gives us an extra layer. By the way, you did know he was bisexual, right? And that this scene is maybe a metaphor for him sucking his tip. He is a good villain and has multiple similarities with another great villain of Indian cinema. Honestly, I could have made a great video on his character alone, but I've already made a video about Gubban and his characteristics. You can check it out below in the description. But the way Alauddin is shot, it is much more appealing than Gubbar. The very first thing you notice about him is that he has a strange vibe in his eyes. There is something vicious, ruthless and sometimes even something vulnerable which had a lot to do with the lighting. His face was also lit in a certain way, for example, in this scene when Alauddin has killed Mehrunisa's father to become the great Sultan, Mehrunisa is weak and terrified, but still pure, hence well lit, whereas Alauddin is lit with low angle lights, this way his face looks much darker and more evil. The light flickering is also used in the drama as because of these flickers the frame seems unstable and disturbing, reflecting upon the disturbing nature of Alauddin. This scene also makes it clear what Alauddin's ultimate desire is, power and wealth, as we see him making love not with the princess but with the crown. At the end we get this shot of Mehrunissa, representing how Alauddin turned her life upside down. 
There are moments in few scenes when the mood shifts suddenly. For instance, take this scene. When Alauddin talks about the man he lost and his favorite bird, he's actually sad as you can see the gentleness in his eyes. But as he stands up and orders to kidnap Ratan Singh, there is a shift in his personality. His eyes are now covered with dark shadows. According to the many scholars who studied the original poem by Malik Mohammad Jaisi, which is actually a much better story than this one, the scholars said that Alauddin is an allegory for delusion, a belief that Padmavati will bring power and wealth to him. His fall into this misbelief is shot in this creeping scene. The water reflection is used as a metaphor to represent this delusion. And with this close-up of his perfectly lit face as if he's already feeling this ultimate desire, one look in his eyes filled with strong ambition and we know that he won't stop at anything. And he doesn't. These little things go a long way for the aesthetics of a film and it shows the cinematographer's imagination to express such abstract ideas. Well, I could have talked about many other things, but I think you understand the point. If you do, please like and comment your opinion and share. Share this video as much as you can so the people like you who love movies have a chance of seeing this, which will really, really help me out to make more videos. If you want to see more of this content, check my previous videos and subscribe to my channel. Well, that is it for now and I'll see you soon. Peace.